Hundred-Eyed Daoist Master is a final boss of Chapter 4 in Black Myth Wukong. This imposing half-centipede half-man is just there to ruin your day. But don't worry, with right strategy and items, you can ruin his day right back. So, in today's video, I'm going to go over some of his most frequently used moves, kind of break down the moveset, and provide some specific strategies to counter these techniques. In addition, I'm also going to give you my boss fight. It wasn't the cleanest because I beat him within just a couple tries, but hey, maybe you can learn from some of my mistakes. Also, before you watch this video, I'm going to assume that you have the Weaver's Needle from completing Purple Cloud Mountain and beating the Dusk Veil. If you don't have it, the fight is going to be much, much, much more difficult, so I strongly recommend you get it beforehand. If you want to know more about that, then check out my dedicated video guide up in the card and down below, watch through, get the Weaver's Needle, then come back here. On the other hand, if you want to know how to deal with stuff in Chapter 5 and beyond, do be sure to get subscribed, leave a like while you're down there, and for now, let's get into things. The first time you fight the Hundred-Eyed Taoist Master, the four sisters aid you in combat. But if you don't kill it in one shot, they won't continue to help on further attempts. Instead, the boss just starts at 80% health. Now, personally, I found having all the extra actors involved in combat made it much harder to avoid stuff, and I actually wasted way too many resources when I was getting hit by an attack that was aimed at someone else. So I'm going to assume that you're on your second, third, whatever attempt where you don't have the sisters helping. He starts at about 80% health. And I'm going to go from there. Now, in terms of special build things, honestly, a lot of it's personal preference. There's no specific stance that I found to be highly effective against him. I really did like Golden Lightning for counterattacking, but also he seems to resist lightning damage, so it's not going to do that much. For pure damage, something like Red Tides or Umbral Abyss would be quite good. And Azure Dust isn't bad either, as it'll allow you to tank some of his most dangerous moves in the final phase. Now, he does have quite a few basic moves. Where he'll use his sword, his legs, he'll attack you with pretty much everything that he's got. For the most part, you don't have to pay too much attention to these, except to just dodge them. However, there is one thing that you do need to pay a bit more attention to. That is, when as part of his attacks, he plants his sword into the ground, because the sword is actually capable of deflecting your strikes. If you do, your attack bounces off, you'll be staggered for a very short duration while the destined one recovers. This means he can very much follow up and hit you with a harder attack. So in general, don't try to attack him too much from the front, I know that's a little hard since he always reorients himself, but he is particularly vulnerable on his sides and behind. Now, in addition to his basic moves, here are a couple things that you need to pay closer attention to. First up, when he spits poison, get away from a boss. This will inflict the poison status basically immediately and do heavy damage. If you take damage from this, try an anti-miasma powder. Unfortunately, this is one of those moves that really does feel a little bit cheap as it's very hard to get away without taking any damage. Something else he does pretty frequently is his sword talisman combo. And there's two specific combos you should pay attention to. The first, he sweeps his talisman from right to left. Then he sweeps from left to right. Then he spins around in a circle. And finally, he does a long charging slash. The thing to pay the most attention to is that long charging slash, because even though it looks like he's bearing down on you blade first, the attack takes a little bit longer to execute than you might first expect. So if you're just trying to dodge to get out of the way, there's a good chance you will dodge, finish your dodge, lose the iframes, then get hit and take damage. But as long as you time things precisely, you should be okay here. Or alternatively, you can simply get away from a boss using something like Cloud Step. You will also occasionally charge his talisman to execute a lightning strike on a location. For this, the easiest thing to do is simply get behind the boss. Not only that, but it's a really good opportunity to get some damage in as he's busy charging up his laser. But if you stand anywhere near the front of a boss, you're going to get caught in the explosion and you're going to take quite a bit of damage. Something else you're going to be dealing with quite a bit are his dive moves. And these can end in a variety of different ways, which makes them a little bit annoying. For example, he can do a poison attack where he kind of sticks his butt out of the ground and sprays poison everywhere. This is really not fun. Especially since it works very similarly to his poisons, but you need to get away as soon as possible. Alternatively, he can leap out of the ground and execute a grab attack, attempting to grab the unfortunate monkey who didn't get out of the way fast enough. This is pretty significantly damaging and fairly difficult to avoid if you're standing still when you see him execute it. So either keep moving, or you can just use a transformation or cloud step to completely cheese the phase in its entirety. Last up, the sword attack. Sometimes he'll just drop his sword on your head, and when he drops his sword on your head, he'll pop out of the ground a second later to attack you. Now, in addition to his talisman moves from earlier, as the fight continues, he'll sometimes use a talisman blast. This is a big old explosion that you notice when you see stones around him starting to rise up from the arena from the force of the energy he's channeling. If he does this, 
get away, it's going to be a big explosion and it hits very hard. Now I noticed that around 50-ish percent health, he starts adding some new moves. Most of these are fairly well telegraphed and easy to avoid, but one of them is downright nasty, and that's his second grab attack. That's right, his boss doesn't have one, but two grab moves. You'll see his right hand flash red. It's very quick. It means he's going to grab and attempt to crush your head. If you don't dodge at the right time, you're going to get hit. Luckily, this isn't super damaging, but man, it is hard to avoid and has an extremely short animation. Then there's his charged blade beam combo, where he charges his blade with electricity, swings it twice, and then ends the sequence in a big old beam laser. The best thing to do here, dodge backwards or to the side for the first two attacks, and then dodge left or right for the third. If you're not confident in your timing, dodge left or right for all three attacks in the sequence. The other thing he does that's a bit annoying is he summons a series of spinning talismans over his head and then begins rapid firing them at you as projectiles. There's a few ways to deal with this. Number one, you can dodge and keep dodging. This is very hard to do and I don't recommend it. Number two is sprint. You should be able to run just fast enough to continually outrun the barrage of projectiles. Number three, use cloud step to drop a decoy and watch him fire into that. Or number four, use your staff spin to counter and deflect the projectiles. From there, the fight continues with the boss repeating these moves until he gets to about 30% health. Then he plants his sword in the ground and summons a golden realm with eyes appearing everywhere. Yep, this is the hundred-eyed in the hundred-eyed Taoist master of his name. This is your cue to use the weaver's needle. Otherwise, the phase is going to be extremely dangerous and difficult to deal with. If you use the needle, it pokes out all the eyes, right after which he's going to eat his sword, empowering himself and entering the final phase. Now, he opens this phase with a grab attack. Of course he does. It's pretty damaging and you should do your best to avoid it, but since you're coming right out of a cutscene into the attack, it's also really annoying to dodge. Do your best or at the very least try to top yourself before the cutscene starts. Now from here, he gains a few new moves, some of which are pretty simple basic attacks, others of which are more annoying. For example, remember the attack where he swept his talismans right left, spun around, finished with a sword attack. Now he does the same thing, except there's no sword, so he finishes with a big old explosion that hits for about half your health. So do your best to dodge this one. Again, the timing does make it a little bit awkward. Another new move he uses in this phase is firing bolts of electricity from a distance. You can either avoid these entirely with cloud step if you still have a mana, or dodge slash sprint. I didn't try deflecting these with staff spin, but I suspect it may work as well. Now after that, the two other moves that I highly recommend keeping an eye out for, simply because they are so damaging, are first, his lightning explosion, where he attacks you, charging up a big old ball of electricity, which then explodes, or second of all, his big charged explosion, where he jumps down, causing an explosion in every direction. Now for the lightning attack, you can actually pretty effectively dodge it by getting behind the boss. It only really hits in front of him, but for the second big explosion, your best bet in avoiding it is timing your dodge correctly. It has a large radius. Technically, you can get away, but it's better to stay close to the boss to get some damage in afterwards. Also, while the timing on this can be tricky, this phase is a great time to use your heavy attacks to interrupt the boss's sequences. This phase hits really, really hard, and it is very easy to bring your attempt to an end early. But also, the boss doesn't have very much health at this point. So if you have transformations, if you have mana, use all of your resources here to burn down the boss as quickly as possible. In general, I would use a little bit of mana in earlier portions of a fight for defensive things like cloud step or rock solid to deflect attacks if that's what you're using. But for the most part, I would save your mana to cast pluck of many in this phase as he really doesn't have that much health left. So you should be able to burn it down very efficiently. Also, if you get off a fully charged heavy attack, you can stagger him for long enough to get a good bit of extra damage in. Now, as always, everyone's experience on these bosses are going to be a little different. For me personally, when I got to that last phase and used the Weaver's Needle correctly, I killed him on my second try. It was close. There were a couple times, as you're about to see in the video, that he should have killed me. I messed up. I ate a mechanic to the face. I took a massive amount of damage, but I had just enough health to live. And those just enoughs got me through the fight. But with all that said, here's how the Hundred-Eyed Taoist Master fight went for me.
And so with that, you bring chapter four to a close. Again, personally, I very much recommend using the Weaver's Needle to trivialize his special phase. Otherwise, it's very difficult, your abilities are heavily restricted, and the boss gets downright scary. After that, you head off to explore chapter five. Now, if you've liked the long and winding chapters, such as three and four, you might be a little disappointed with five and six as they're much shorter. On the other hand, I personally like them because they tell a concise story and you go from major action point to major action point without things dragging on in quite the same way as chapters three and four. Then again, that's very much personal preference. So I guess my question is, which do you prefer? Long and winding chapters or short and concise ones? Or maybe you prefer the middle ground, such as chapter two, where there's plenty of action beats to keep you going, but I'd call it neither long nor short. Let me know some of those thoughts down in the comments below. If you're looking for something else to watch, don't worry, I'll leave a video guide on how to get a Weaver's Needle up in the card and down below, along with guides on how to find and defeat some of the secret bosses found throughout the chapter, including Yellow Log. And if you want to brush up on any of these specific mechanics used by the 100-Eyed Taoist Master, then do check out the full written guide over at Maxwell GG. With that said, I'd like to take a minute to thank my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you cannot make videos just like this one possible. Link support is down below. A big thanks to everyone who watched to the end of the video. I certainly hope the tip to pop the Weaver's Needle as soon as you see the glowing eyes saves you some frustration. Personally, I tried to go through that phase on my first attempt and oh man, it is super rough. Zero out of 10, I do not recommend. But hey, just poke up those eyes with your needle and you'll be totally fine. I don't know if I just got lucky or if this boss is actually pretty easy, but it didn't take me very many tries. Which uh, isn't quite true for the chapter five boss, but more about that in a future video. For now, thanks again. I'm glad you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.